uh, not looking good for the Americans. Yeah, well, we finally got here though. We've been, I mean, for crying out loud, we've been doing this show all summer, all fall, all winter. I don't even know when we started with the Corona stuff back in like March. Just wondering, would we ever get to football? And then finally got here. So I guess that's that's one hurdle across. A couple other interesting scores: South Alabama beat Southern Miss thirty-two twenty-one, and then Southern Miss fired their coach, so he's gone. Uh, Army blanked Middle Tennessee forty-two to nothing. Marshall fifty-nine nothing over Eastern Kentucky. So we had a real actual football. Uh, actually, we had another football game this uh, this midweek. Mike UAB will be traveling down to play the Hurricane, so a local uh, sort of contest here in the in the Florida market. Uh, but uh, we finally got real football. Uh, it is uh, it is long awaited, and we never you know we never knew if we'd get here, how we'd get here, when we'd get here, but we finally got here, and then and obviously UCF will join those ranks, Mike. As I, what sucks, is I keep looking at the schedule, like I'll look at week two to see who's playing, and they keep the 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 UCF FIU game on the top of the schedule on ESPN. They just say postponed. It's really annoying because every time I log on, I'm like, oh, you see, oh no, they postponed. Um, so ESPN, if you want to take that down, that would be fantastic. Well, what really hurt me the other day was on Friday. Um, after work, I was, I stopped up by the store to pick up a couple of drinks and my watch gave me an alert saying UCF North Carolina kicked off. <laughs> so oh, what? O'clock. And I was like, Oh man, cause I had programmed all the games into my phone and I never changed it off my calendar. And yeah, that hurt. Oh, oh man. That all Friday could have been so pumped up, ready for that game. That would have been such a huge, I probably would have been in Orlando for that one. Oh, yeah, man. I was planning on it. I took a so it's funny, I posted it on I put it on Twitter, but back in like January I took a, I took a PTO day on, on Friday because I was like, Oh, it'll be a game. I'm going down there, my first time back in Florida in like four years. I'm not missing this for the world. I'm taking off, blah blah blah. And then I was like the time was coming up, I was looking at my calendar, I'm like, Oh crap, I'm off on Friday. I didn't I forgot I took a PTO day, so I was like, Well I might as well just keep this PTO day and, and go do some day drinking, um to uh to at least act like a game was coming, but yeah, that was that was cow of the week worthy uh, for yeah for me for sure when when that took <laughs> place because uh, I had I had the same emotion you had although maybe your watch is more cow of the week worthy because that's really kind of rubbing it in. <laughs> and I gotta confess, I didn't watch any of the games this weekend. <laughs> I made my picks, but I, I haven't watched them. How did it look on TV, yeah, bro? I tried, man. Yeah, I tried. I I hung in there for like a quarter of the Memphis game. Um, I was watching like the first, you know, seven minutes of the BYU game before you and I start here. It's weird, man. It's you, you, it's, it's really quiet. You can hear the, the pads, you know, running into each other. You can hear, uh, you know, the sidelines talking. Um, it's, it's weird. It, it does take some getting used to. And I, I, I wonder, that's why I look at these scores in week one and I say to myself, all right, I wonder how, um, and I think about this from a UCF standpoint. Now UCF and Georgia Tech will have some, st- uh, some fans in the stands. I think about 11,000, I think is the number there. Um, so maybe that helps a little bit, but you got to wonder if it's kind of unnerving if you're a player. You're looking up and you're like, there's not a single freaking person in here. You know, and if, if some of these guys like a Memphis or an SMU who we thought were decent teams, maybe it's just the, you know, the, the shell shock nature of looking around and no one's there. Um, and even Navy, in the pregame for Navy, like I, I don't want to do Cal of the Week all in the first segment here, but uh, Kirk Herbstreit, who was calling the game, said that Navy had been taking all these protocols. They had been testing every week. They had been distancing and yada, yada, yada. And they haven't been tackling in practice. So Navy hasn't <laughs> tackled a soul until they stepped on the field against BYU, which, again, for safety purposes, I'm all for it, by the way. But uh, imagine playing football, not tackling anybody for an entire like six-week period. That had to be really weird. <laughs> well, that explains why they're down 14 <laughs> That explains a lot of that. Yes. Uh, did you get to see if there was any cursing? or you Can, can you hear the players clearly on the field? Because I know in baseball, a guy strikes out, and you hear the F word just being flung around sometimes. I couldn't hear it super clear. Um, you could hear it in the NBA bubble all the time, too, and Carmelo has this you know, saying that he does when he gets rebounds, which you could hear really clearly. I didn't hear it really super clearly, but you can hear pads popping. You can hear helmets colliding. Um, you know, you can hear yelling from the sidelines a little bit. I assume those are play calls of some sort. I don't know what, they, what they're saying, per se, so... Um, it's not intelligible to me, but it, it's definitely weird, man. It, it takes some getting used to. I will, I will admit, watching you know um, NBA specifically is probably the only sport I've been watching heavily. They are adding in crowd noise. Um, I think they're adding in crowd noise, and so I don't even really notice that I'm not watching a real game because they've done that. But when I watched the first game, I think it was the Memphis game I saw on Saturday night, and there was like no noise. I was like, oh my god, it's dead silent in there. So. Um, Maybe UCF lucks out getting some fans early on um, at uh, at Georgia Tech. I think ECU is next. They've had a lot of virus concerns, so who knows where they're going to be at that point. And then obviously we're back home uh, October 3rd uh, in the bounce house. So 
we'll we'll see what that looks like. But it, it was certainly weird. But at least it's back, Mike. We've been hoping. We've been waiting. We've been wondering. We've been wishing. We've been doing all kinds of things. And uh, our time has finally come. Last week, you and I had the, the first uh, breakdown of our season preview. Uh, we both predicted uh, UCF to run the table again. So, uh, And uh, round two of our preview, coming up right after this break, we're going to go through the depth chart. We'll tell you who's going to contribute to that 9-0 and start. So don't go anywhere. Actually, I guess 9-0 finish. Well, I'm going to start because we're going to go to the playoffs, right? So 9-0 and start for UCF. And uh, we'll tell you who's going to be contributing to that right after this. Don't go anywhere, sons of UCF. All right, you're going you're gonna to want to hear the preseason uh, depth chart breakdown in a second. But before you do that, you're going to want to hear about screen skins. We've been telling you about this now for about two months. And I'm so glad, I'm so proud, I'm so happy that a bunch of you have taken advantage of this great opportunity to get your cell phone uh, hooked up with a UCF screen skin. And what this thing is, plastic cover goes on the front of your phone, the screen side, the, screen that, the, uh, the side that can crack, by the way, which is what you do not want to happen with your phone. But if there's a screen skin on there, you are all set. You are good to go. UCF is also etched into the cover, but not really etched. But you see UCF there. It's actually magical when the phone is uh, is off. You see UCF on the screen when the phone turns on. The UCF goes away, and you see your screen is clear as day. Protect your phone. Let's everybody know you're a UCF fan, and it's pretty freaking cool. There's really no reason to not get a screen skin, and you can do that pretty quickly. Google Screen Skins, go to their website. You'll see all the inventory. They have a bunch of different schools, some sororities, fraternities. They got you covered. You're going to want to get your hands on the Screen Skins. Season is right around the corner. You're going to be going to games maybe. You're going to away games. You're going to be traveling. You're going to be around you know, maybe some drunk people at a party. you want, you got to protect your phone. Screen Skins will do that for you, and it'll do it in style. Don't miss out on a Screen Skin. I don't know about the rest of you, or maybe it's just me, but I, I seem to drop my phone like once a week whether it's uh, taking it out of my pocket or just going to grab it and it slips out. I drop my phone all the time. And every time I used to drop it, I would just pray by the time I picked it up, look at it and it would be cracked or it would still be working. Now when I drop it, I have no worries. I, uh, whatever. I drop my phone. Yeah, big deal. And I pick it up and it's perfectly fine because of the screen skin. Screen skin is protecting my phone. Get one, protect yours and look cool doing it with the UCF logo right there on the front. If you haven't got one yet, I, uh, I keep telling you this week, every week, what the hell are you doing? Go get a screen skin right now. You're missing out. Don't miss out. Google screen skins. Go to the website. Go do some shopping. Put some stuff in the cart there. Look around. See what you see. What you like. Get a UCF one. Maybe get one for your significant other. Maybe your sorority fraternity. Get one of those. You know, do what you got to do. Get your screen skins. You're going to go to the checkout and you're going to type in "sons of UCF" all one word, and that's a promo code that'll get you 10 percent off of your basket. So. Again, Google Screen Skins. Skins is spelled S K I N Z. Use the uh, the promo code Sons of UCF, and you'll get ten percent off. You can thank us later, and uh, and your phone will thank you now. All right, preview coming up. Don't move. All right, so here we go. Uh, season preview, second installment for us, Mike. Last week again, we went over the schedule, uh, and we told you how we thought UCF was going to fare. We had them going nine and zero. Uh, ESPN actually this week posted their um, their playoff uh, chances and national championship chances. UCF is listed. Uh, we we certainly are. I think we're the fifth or sixth on the list. If I saw that correctly, I don't know if you saw that, Mike. But we uh, looks like they're giving us a puncher's chance. That's my new favorite term, by the way. Thanks, Ben Stout, of uh, of getting uh, into the playoffs. So let's uh, let's do a little depth chart breakdown. Uh, obviously, Hypel has not released the depth chart yet. Even when he does, I expect he'll have redacted all the names. So you may never know what it is anyway. But uh, Mike and I are going to tell you what it is right now. We have exclusively gone through the list, and we think we know who the starters are going to be and who the major players are going to be. Spoiler alert, it won't be a surprise to you, Mike. So let's, uh, let's start on the defense. What do you say? Let's, start, uh, let's work back to front. Uh, so let's start with the two back safeties. Um, I think can we all agree here back safety starters are going to be Richie Grant and Antoine Collier. Do we agree there? I think that is the most definitive position we have, maybe on the whole team. Well, besides quarterback, on the whole team is the safeties. Yes, Richie Grant, Antoine Collier. I'm really excited about Collier, and I was kind of researching this. I guess I didn't. He, I didn't realize this. He quietly had a year that I guess maybe I didn't keep up on. Uh, he had 74 tackles, which was fifth on the team last year. Uh, he had four ints, which led the team last year. 
He had five pass defenses, uh, and he had two fumble recoveries. He had a really good year, um, and I guess maybe shame on me for not recognizing it. I know he had a big hit against Houston. Uh, so uh, Randy, you know, Shannon talked about how interchangeable he hoped to have both Richie and Antoine, so we'll see how they go. But I'm certainly excited about Antoine Collier's year. Um, who's backing those guys up? So this is where things get a little bit murky, and we're going to be really upfront and tell you that some of these guys are going to be interchangeable. So here are the names I think we may hear backing these guys up um, or sort of in that second, third group, Mike. First off is Devod Wilson. Um, I don't think we have any update on whether or not he's eligible, correct? I haven't heard it unless I've missed it. I haven't heard definitive, but I think everybody was very positive in that he will be eligible to play. So we got Devod Wilson. We have the other transfer, Jaden Francois. Again, same thing. He uh, He would need a waiver of eligibility to play. So those are two new guys. Specifically, when you heard Randy Shannon talk about him, he talked about Devod Wilson kind of getting in and learning stuff a little bit. He seemed to downplay uh, Jaden Francois just a little bit and just said he's, you know, still got a long way to go and he's still working on stuff. So it sounded like, at least in Randy's, if you're going to read between the Randy uh, Shannon translator, that Devod had a better chance. The other two names that Randy mentioned, and again, whether these are safeties or where they end up, Dylan Lester and Derek Gaines are two guys to uh, to think about, Mike. They both played last year a little bit. Uh, and then Jermaine McMillan. I think those three, four guys, if you add in Francois, five, are probably in the mix for the safety spots in, in some respects and that kind of the backup roles. Lester's a name we've heard before. I think Lester was your pick last year or the year before to be a breakout player, and yeah. then he had an injury. Yeah. So it is a name that we're familiar with. Um, if you listen to the Randy Shannon interview the other day, he has said that they are preparing everybody to play all over. So if you're a safety, you're going to learn how to play corner, and corners going to know how to play safety. Everybody's going to know every position because of the year that we're in, because of who knows about death and who knows the, about um, the coronavirus and people testing positive. You may see Richie Grant having to play a cornerback one game or you know some people playing out of their natural positions. So death charts are one thing, but everybody's going to have to be prepared to play everywhere. But, it, yeah, uh, Collier, Collier had a great year last year. He, he – Hit himself known now as the big hitter. He's the thumper back there. Remember, he was the guy that had the interception in 2017 to seal the Peach Bowl. Mm-hmm. 2018, not as big of a year, but then last year he really started to step it up a little bit. So for sure the safety position I'm very excited about. Then we have the the nickelback role. It's probably going to be Aaron Robinson. But, I, you know, I wonder how much nickel he'll play this year, Mike. Will he, will he slot over and, and play an actual true corner spot, or is he going to be kind of like that rover on defense? He's another guy who had a fantastic year last year. Uh, he was six on the team of tackles, 49 tackles. Uh, he also had a uh, an INT 40-yarder uh, that should have been a touchdown against Stanford but was called back. Uh, he had nine pass defended. Uh, that was second on the team behind Neville Clark last year. So he has a, also had a really good year. He just seemed like he was always all over the place. He had a four and a half tackles for loss. Um, I mean, the kid was a ball of energy. So I will definitely see him in, in some formation, whether that's Nickelback or to your point, we'll, we'll, where will he play? But I'm really excited about A-Rob coming back. I think he's going uh, to have another big year coming up. Yes, very solid player last year. And who knows if he has to slide over. For, but the, the nickel position may be the most important corner position because that you're you're guarding those slot receivers, the guys that are the shiftiest, quickest guys typically, and he's proven to be one heck of an athlete. So I like having him there. If we have, if we have the other guys to step up out on the outside, it's a good place for him there. In there, he seems comfortable inside. All right, let's go to cornerback. So last year, uh, first game, we trotted out a starting cornerback group of Navelle Clark, who we just mentioned a little bit ago, now in the NFL, and uh, and Brandon Moore. So w- Brandon Moore, I think for the purposes of this conversation, uh, hopefully he gets a chance to come back. I don't I don't know that we want to count on that, so it, I'm going to leave him off our list, um, and hopefully he gets a chance to recuperate and gets back on the field this season. But you know, I, I think obviously the most important thing for him right now is getting healthier. So Brandon Moore obviously is a name that was started last year. So when he went down, Tay, Cow- Tay Gowan jumped in the fray. Now Tay Gowan has opted out. We also saw a lot of Zamari Maxwell, Mike. Uh, he wears number eight uh, on the defensive side. He had an up-and-down year, in my opinion. I think he, he was certainly the more picked-on of the cornerbacks, obviously, when you have uh, you have Novell out there, you had Tay Gowan. Uh, Zamari was kind of the the, uh, the more picked-on guy. Uh, no interceptions last year, only four passes defended. Uh, and so you got to assume that he's going to step in in one corner spot. Um, and the other corner, I'm going to throw in a name, Mike, that Randy Shannon keeps bringing up. 
This guy was named as a, a, a freshman All-American candidate um, for the American Conference, and that's Corey Thornton. Uh, coming in true freshman, um, you, you, you very rarely hear true freshman's names. You've heard his name a bunch, Mike. So right now I'm going to say starting corners are going to be Maxwell and Thornton. 